I'm now live. Uh, hello. Hi, guys. Um, welcome to this uh, Team Joe Talks Instagram Live. I'm very excited today um, because I am talking with someone that I really admire. Um, her name's Karen Bass. I know that a lot of you most likely know who she is and have seen her in the news, uh, especially a lot this year. She's been doing really great things. Um, she's currently serving her fifth term representing the 37th Congressional District in California. And I mean, the list of her accomplishments is very impressive. Um, she's on the House Committee of Foreign Affairs where she's the chair of the Subcommittee on Africa. Uh, global Health, Global Human Rights, and International Organizations. Um, she serves as the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. And in June, she was a part of introducing the Justice in Policing Act of 2020 and is working on new community-based crisis response legislation. Those are both extremely important things right now. Um, and I, I mean, I could go on and on <laughs> about uh, her accomplishments because she's an incredibly impressive leader, but um, I think she's probably requesting to join and we want to get her in here and start this conversation about here she comes. Uh. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> how are you? I'm doing so well, how are you? Good. I'm doing fine. I'm so excited to meet you. I get to meet a superhero. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited to meet you. I feel like you're the superhero. You know well, what I realized? We're both Libras. Your your birthday is a day before mine. Exactly. I was going to tell you happy birthday. Did yeah, happy birthday birth to you as well. Did you have a good day? I did. I did. And you? Very good. Very That's good. Funny. Well, I want to know how that little boy's doing. Oh, man. <laughs> He's the best. Uh, I am loving being a parent. I love being a mom. He's such a sweetheart. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, you enjoy every minute of this time because it goes by so fast. I know. I know. He's already so big. And every day I'm, like, crying because he's gained half an ounce. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what about you? How are you doing in these in these? very difficult, bizarre, bizarre times. And we're 17 days out, which is so hard to believe. I know, and they're gonna be like the longest 17 days in my life. I just wish it was tomorrow. Me too. <laughs> and, and it feels like it's gonna be feel like forever after that too. I mean, I think it's gonna be, November is gonna be a, a year. <laughs> exactly, but you know what though? I'm feeling more and more excited because People are turning out to vote now. Yeah. In the day, I just learned that 750,000 people have already voted. And I learned that that's four times more than normal. And we're hearing it all over the country. So that makes me feel like maybe we'll actually know the results November 3rd. And we just have to have a change. <laughs> we have to. We have to. And it is. And it. I agree with you. I do feel hope, too. Um, and everyone I talk to as well in my family, my friends, people are paying attention now. I mean, it's hard not to, but uh, it's so important. <laughs> I mean, it's vital right now. And I'm, thank you so much for talking to me today. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to you about a, a number of different things. And most importantly, I think because it's so personal to me, last year in April, you announced the reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act, which is a matter very close to me because I have experienced domestic violence personally. I've spoken out about it. Um, and you announced this reauthorization with Congressman Fitzpatrick from Pennsylvania. And this piece of legislation seems to have had a really uh, crazy history since 1994. Um, and during the government shutdown, it expired, if correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and it passed with the support of 33 Republicans because uh, I think in no small part to your work to build bipartisan support. Why do you think uh, this bill, this reauthorization is so important? I mean, it's important to me because it's so personal to me um, and I'm directly affected by this issue. And, and where also do you think 
are the areas that we need to expand the law? Well, you know, a couple of things. One of the things that's so important about the law is that it funds all of the domestic violence programs around the country. And so these programs now are in jeopardy of running out of money. Hopefully some of them had some savings, but that's just crazy. But Melissa, you know the reason why it stalled is because some of my colleagues do not want to extend protections to Native American women. And you know, Native American women reservation, what happens is men outside of the reservation go on the reservation and they assault, they rape, and sometimes kill Native women. And then they leave the reservation. There's nothing that they can do because an Indian reservation is a separate government. Wow. So that's one reason. The other reason is, is that my Republican colleagues in the Senate do not want to protect trans women. Mm. Mm -hmm. So trans women and Native women. So here's what I know. Here's the good news. We might not be able to pass it right now, but in January, when President Biden and Vice President Harris are sworn in, we will have the Violence Against Women's Act. And you know why I know that for sure is because Vice President Biden is the original yep. senator who created the Violence Against Women's Act 30 years ago. Before right. that, people believe, well, you know, that's an individual matter. It's not a matter for society. So with his leadership, I feel confident that we'll get it back. I hate the fact that we have to wait a few more months. Yeah, I do too. I think it's especially in these times, I mean, the rates of domestic violence occurrences are just skyrocketing right now because we're all stuck at home. That's right. Um, it's uh, it's so vital and important, and um, I hope everyone out there recognizes that. Uh, well, it's why we have to vote. It's why we have to make yep. sure that they win, because I'll tell you, if they don't win, then these domestic violence programs will shut down permanently. Because if we weren't able to get it passed now, why would we think we would get it yeah. passed if we have to go through four more years of this guy? Yeah. Who's got history right <laughs> and and that's and that's a terrifying thought I mean in my situation I was lucky enough I had the means to get out myself and and to really pick myself up but I can't even fathom not having the resources at, or or the programs if if I hadn't had the means that I did um, having the job that I had at the time when I got out of the relationship I was in I, I just can't imagine that those resources not being there for women. Well, let me just thank you for speaking out because when people like you speak out, that's just huge. That's huge. Come here, Michael. That is just, just huge. Well, thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, I want you to see my uh, grandson. <laughs> is that a Halloween mask? <laughs> Who are you? That's, that's so terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Michael. Well, you know, be, because they can't go out and trick or treat. Yeah, I know. It's so sad. What well, a bummer. Are you guys doing anything special, though, for Halloween? Yeah, Staying just home? very small. It's a very small gathering of my family. Uh, my grandson, who will turn six years old. So we're combining a little party with a little Halloween. And uh, at six, he won't really know the difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, he won't. And he hopefully, over two. <laughs> uh, you know what? I have a cute little Halloween onesie to put on my baby, <laughs> and we'll probably watch the movies. Um, I not really much. It's it is kind of it's a bummer that we're not going to get any trick or treaters, but it's for a good reason. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so that next year this time, exactly, we'll be able to be back to normal. Exactly. <laughs> And I, it, you know, one of the other things I want to talk to, talk to you about because it it's very important for this time next year as well uh, is, and it's another way that women are really in jeopardy right now um, because of this election is the nomination of Amy Coney Barrett, um, because President Trump and the Republicans have scheduled a vote on the Senate floor for Judge Barrett days before the election. We've all seen it on all over the news. It's um, wildly hypocritical, uh, and her confirmation would put Roe v. Wade um, 
at risk, which which makes sure that being a woman isn't treated as a pre-existing condition. And uh, Obergefell, which gave LGBTQ people the right to marry. Um, so what what can we do about this? Because this is something I'm really concerned about. I watch the news and it's really stresses me out. Um, feels so unfair. Totally unfair. And I and I just you know I feel so bad because I know that Justice um, Ginsburg is just looking down, going, "Oh my word." Yeah. Well, I don't know that there's much we can do at this point. I do believe she'll be confirmed this week. But we absolutely have to vote because I'm worried about a woman's ability to choose as well. And the idea that there'd be a woman on the court that would take away women's ability to choose is worse. But how about the Affordable Care Act? Here we are in the yeah. middle of the pandemic. And on November 11th, she'll be sitting on the court deciding whether or not 30 million people lose their health care. And let me just tell you something. If you're not a part of that 30 million, everybody benefits from the Affordable Care Act. Yep. Because pre-existing conditions, and that means, just think, we have 8 million people in the United States that have contracted COVID. That means 8 million people have pre-existing conditions. <sighs> yeah. So if the Affordable Care Act is removed, those 8 million people might not ever be able to get insurance that they can afford again. That's what's at stake in this election. So we have to make sure that we have President Biden and Vice President Harris, because if something happens to the Affordable Care Act, and we have to take back the Senate, mm -hmm. then new legislation has to be passed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pivotal. Um, it's, uh, I, I was under my parents, because of the Affordable Care Act, I had my parents um, insurance until I was 26. Mm -hmm. And that was so important for my development as an adult. <laughs> Um, and not to mention, uh, like everything you were just saying, with everything that's going on, this is um, those eight million people. We 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 can't afford for anything to happen. And you know, Melissa, you know the whole world is looking at us. I know. And saying, what happened to you guys? I know what it's embarrassing. I, it is absolutely embarrassing. <laughs> Absolutely. And so the world is counting on us to correct this. Yeah. And then I hope afterwards, I hope he goes away. I mean, he, he said he might leave the country. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> we need to do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wonder where he would go. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? Where? <laughs> well. But I also want to talk to you um, uh, about equal pay, mm -hmm. um, which is something Justice Ginsburg was also very vocal about. Um, because women still earn, on average, $10,000 less than men each year, which is just astounding. Um, losing half, nearly half a million dollars over the course of their lifetimes. I, in the year 2020, it just, I can't. Um, and I know that for Black and Latino women, the numbers are even worse. So what do you think can be done um, to solve this issue? And, and I know, I'm sure uh, Joe and Kamala have a plan to fix this. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's something that both of them have worked on for a long time. Right. You know, uh, I worked with uh, Senator Harris when she was the district attorney in, Sacra in uh, San Francisco, I was working in Sacramento, and she has a long history of fighting for equal pay. And right. then when, when uh, the vice president was senator, has had a long history of that. And those are the kind of things that we really need to understand is at stake in this election. So we have to make sure that we do, I mean, 24 seven, you know what I've been telling everybody, Melissa? is that since we're in the Zoom world, that everyone can do a Zoom call with their friends and family from around the country. 
to say, you know what, in this particular election, you have to have a plan to vote. So there's yeah. this website called IWillVote.com. No matter where you are in the country, you can get on that website and they can tell you when, where, and how to vote in your particular city. And so uh, I believe that when we put the two of them in office, we will be able to address in a much stronger way, equal pay. Yeah. I mean, it's long overdue for something really aggressive um, to get it to where equity is just normalized. Exactly. Well, can I ask you a question? What? I want to know what it's like to be a superhero. <laughs> to you how does that feel that i mean it's it's aside from the physical i mean it's difficult guys it's yeah. hard <laughs> but um you know it's i i'm so grateful that i've i've had this in this kind of, <laughs> it's it, it's really affected my life in every avenue like i you can't help but let what Supergirl stands for and what these superheroes we all look up to stand for, like kind of infuse everything, every decision you make. Like she, playing Supergirl has made me actually feel a lot of hope, which is really important in times like these. And, you know, look for the best in people and, and challenge them to do better, which is exactly what we have to do right now. It's crazy. Oh no, I can't hear you. You know when you watch oh, there you you and see you. Oh, can you hear me now? Are you can you hear yeah. me now? Oh, okay. There you are. When uh, uh, last night I was talking to Okay, last night I was talking to a group of Girl Scouts. And you know, they wanted to talk to me because it was a part of them getting their badges, you know, elected up joke. And I was telling them as girls, mm -hmm. when you walk in a room, you own it. Exactly, you yeah. own the room. But when girls, that gets reinforced. Oh, that's great to hear. I actually got to meet a couple of Girl Scouts. They were a troop that went to the White House and they met President Obama in, oh, I want to say 2000. Gosh, I can't remember when it was. Um, five, six years ago. And then they came to set to visit. And those girls, it just made my heart grow exponentially because they were so I could just see the future and see their vitality and their passion and their excitement. And um, that was certainly a highlight of being able to, to play Supergirl and see how she affects uh, little girls around the world. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure they were thrilled to meet you and to be on the set to see actually how it's done. I'm sure that was cool for them. Yeah, I'm sure that was really cool for them. I mean, and, and there's one there's one more thing I wanted to talk to you about, too, before we run out of time. Because I watched the town halls Thursday night. I watched um, bits and pieces of both because, of course, they were on at the same time. And President Trump, again, was telling lies about mask wearing, which we all know, um, if you follow the science, that it makes a massive difference and that it's what we should all be doing right now. How do you think Joe Biden would have prevented this current situation? And, and, and talk to me a little bit more about um, their plan, um, Joe and Kamala's plan that will ensure Americans get the best care possible. Well, you know, I I think that the best and when President Obama and Biden were in, we had what could have been a pandemic, Ebola. And what happened yeah. is the vice president and the president got together, stopped it. They stopped it. Everybody in the world, Ebola never hit here. I think maybe two people died from Ebola here, spread yeah. Africa. And so I know that President Biden and Vice President Harris will be driven to what science says, 
Trump brings, I mean, he's got this quack from California who doesn't even know anything about <laughs> epidemiology or, or pandemic. And he's telling him what to do. So I know they would be driven and I know that there would be a strategy. And so I'm comfortable. The thing that's me is that the fact that we've already had 200,000 people die. And frankly, yeah. if President Biden and Kamala Harris are not sworn in in January, I'm worried next year, this time there are a million people. And yeah. Trump seems to be okay with that. He says yeah. he wants us to congratulate he does seem to be okay with it. And it seems like the herd. Two hundred thousand people dying because there hasn't been a million sick. Is that? Yeah, it's terrible. Having a little and, bit of and Trump. this whole idea of. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're. I don't know what's going on. I'm so bad at this. <laughs> oh, there you are. Can you hear me now? Okay, good. Um, yeah. Well, I agree with you, and I'm afraid. Yes. I'm afraid of all of those things too, and I don't want it to see us. I don't want herd immunity to even be an option. I mean, um, the the fact that millions of people could die is just, and that's tossed away so flippantly. Um, right. I, I, uh, it's. Do you think that people are ready to kind of turn the page on all of this, like? nastiness and just disregard for decency and from what I've seen I think people are ready I think people, people are running running I think so to too and across party lines like people that I know that have voted Republican their entire lives I, I think we all see it. we all see it we just have to deliver it right exactly Exactly. So, have you voted? Because I got my I got my ballot in the in the mail. I too. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. I think well, I lost you. I don't know what's honor happening. Honor talking to you. Likewise. <laughs> Likewise, I have loved talking to you. Thank you for taking the time. I know you're very busy right now doing very important work, um, and I really appreciate it. And everyone that's- 16 days. <laughs> 16 days. Everyone get out there and vote. Text W-I-N, that is the word WIN, to number 30330 to join the campaign. That's very important. And please, even more important, check your registration. Make a plan at IWillVote.com. Let's get out there and vote. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.